You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Mike, um, we've come to our last uh, part of the discussion today, Mike, and uh, it's been a pretty long one. But um, I thought to end our discussion today, Mike, we uh, asked our listeners to send in some questions for you to answer. And uh, they want to get your answers to these questions that they've sent in. So um, we'll start with the first person who sent in their questions. Uh, it's uh, from Jihan, who um, is a regular listener of the podcast. Uh, he sends in two questions for you, Mike, to answer. Um, his first question was, uh, was Mike actually at the second test in Madras, now known as Chennai in 1986? If so, uh, were the conditions really as ridiculous as most people make out? I've heard it was 40 degrees with 90% humidity, but that does seem a bit over-exaggerated to me. And uh, what does Mike think about Greg Matthews really not giving Dean Jones much credit for his innings, saying it was really on a flat pitch? And was this series potentially what set the foundations for the complete turnaround and fortunes of Australian cricket? starting with the World Cup uh, win in the following year. So your response to that, Mike, that's Jihan's first question there. Yeah, well, Jihan is, uh, is right. The conditions were somewhat exaggerated. It wasn't 40 degrees, but it was probably 35. And the, but the humidity reading of 90% was pretty right. It was very, very oppressive conditions. Um, uh, I've lived south of Chennai in the Mahapalipuram Road, so I know the area and the weather pretty well. And it, um, it was very, very hot and very oppressive. Um, I, Greg Matthews is a difficult, uh, a difficult figure, always has been. He bowled beautifully in that test match. Um, and uh, to get his, his 10 wickets, his two fives, um, his criticism of Jones was unacceptable and outrageous. I've got no idea you never what got into his head, but you never always know what gets into his head anyway. He's a very erratic um, individual. Um, his innings, Jones's innings, was as good as I've seen. Um, in the conditions, it was exceptional. Uh, Border got 100. Uh, Kapil Dev got 100, David Boone got 100, and Gavaska got one of the great 90s of all time. I can still see him down on one knee square driving um, Craig McDermott now. Um, so there was some wonderful batting, but none better than Jones. Um, and any criticism of him uh, was, uh, was unfair. And yes, Jahan is right that the, the 1986 and 87... Um, what was developed in that side over those two years on the subcontinent. There was the hiccup back in Australia in 86-7 against England. But um, basically the success that they trumpeted in 1989 in England was all born out of the mateship and the skills developed under Border and Bob Simpson in 86 and 87. So Jahan is spot on there. Yeah, I think that's a good response there, Mike. Um, his second question for you, Mike, is uh, where does Mike see the state of test cricket in India going? A strong first-class system promotion by key players such as Virat Kohli playing in home conditions that are almost impossible to beat India in developing a team that has been more than competitive away from home. In recent years, has kept them near the top of the ladder. However... With so many players developing via the IPL route these days, could we be seeing a potential decline? And could we get to a point whereby only the Ashes has any significance and following in the years to come? Yeah, it's an interesting one. I, I would like to think that the, the Kohli influence uh, and just before him, the Dravids, the Lakshmans, um, Comblaze and company have all talked about the joys of Test match cricket. You would hope that there are enough <coughs> who care deeply uh, about Test match cricket there 
that uh, they will continue to prosper. I mean, we're dealing with the un absolutely unknown. Um, India has been spectacularly successful um, in every aspect of the game, including their test match cricket. Um, and, and their record outside the country is, is, has improved dramatically, where historically it was very poor. Um, I mean, they're virtually unbeatable in their own conditions, um, although Australia um, have uh, had some limited successes there over the last 10, 15 years or so. Um, I, it's, uh, I don't think even Jahan would know. I mean, you, can, you could just hope if he cares about Test Match cricket. I mean, that's where Coley's been so good. He's talked it up. Hopefully, those who follow in his footsteps get the same sort of joy from Test Match cricket that Kohli and Tendulkar and Dravid and Laxman and, and Co, the joy they've got from it and the success that they've had. Um, and Anil Kumble, who I saw the other day in India, had a yarn with him. And um, Dravid's coaching um, the, or was managing the team, or was he coaching one or the other? He was in the West Indies with them. Um, so hopefully that their philosophy uh, and their love for the games, you know, is handed down. And so the next generation will care about it. Yeah, I think that's uh, a good response there to Jihan's question there. Thank you, Jihan, for your questions. And our last listener's question, Mike, comes from Hazar. And he says, is cricket losing its popularity in Australia because we don't see any crowds for matches? That's his question for you. Um, no. Well, we see pretty good crowds for test matches. We see pretty good crowds for the One Day Internationals still. Um, he's probably referring to the Sheffield Shield where it's where he's spot on. We don't see very good crowds at all. This has been a recurring issue for some years now. And that's because of the amount of short form stuff again. Um, and it does take, it's a different society. It's a busy society. Um, people don't have the amount of time that they once had to to, uh, to dedicate to watching the game. Uh, the good compensation there is there's been some television appreciation now of uh, of Sheffield Shield cricket, and that's a good thing. Um, but um, no, I don't think the crowds are falling too dramatically in Australia. If the competition is good, Australian cricket crowds have good knowledge and do care about the game. And they'll uh, they'll attend, but um, uh, but he's right about the uh, the concerns about the domestic cricket, uh, but that's been a, a a recurring theme. One way around it has been partly successful in playing on smaller grounds and taking it out of the big cities. I mean, it costs too much money to open um, the MCG, for instance, for a for a Sheffield Shield match. So if you're playing it at the Junction Oval, uh, at St Kilda can be very successful. Or taking it to country venues, that um, providing that the, uh, f that the, uh, the pitch conditions have been um, have developed to a first-class level, um, that can be very successful as well. So there are ways around it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that is a, a recurring issue and has been for probably near, over 20 years now. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Hazai, for your question. I hope Mike answered it uh, to the best of his ability. Hi, everyone. Hope you enjoyed hearing Mike and I answer some of your cricketing questions.